Let's hear it, Grace. It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Oh, yeah. Here we are with the integration chapter, lesson number two, solving differential equations. So, first of all, what are differential equations? Well, equations like dy by dx equals 3x squared minus 7 are known as differential equations. To solve a differential equation means you want to go back the way and you want to get back to y equals. The way you can do that is by using integration. Whenever you integrate, remember on the end you have your plus c. And if you have that, if you have y equals something plus c, then it is known as your general solution. However, sometimes you will be given more information. And if you are given additional information, you can then work out the value of c. Yeah. And if you are given information, if you do work it out, you can then find what is known as the particular solution. So, to sum up, if you have dy by dx equals something like 8x, that is known as a differential equation. If you integrate that, if you get back to y, you would get 4x squared. Remember, you have a plus c in the end. Whenever you have the plus c in the end, it's the general solution of your differential equation. And if you then get more information, if you solve that to find the value of c, if you find it, then that will be your particular solution. Let's do some examples then of solving differential equations. So example number one. Find the particular solution of the differential equation dy by dx equals 8x minus 1, given that when x equals 1, y equals 5. This is the additional information that I'm telling you about. This allows you to work out the value of c. So if you want to solve that, you want to get back to y, how do you get back to y, Ryan? Integrate! Yes, you integrate. So you want to integrate 8x minus 1. Integrating that then, just remove that. If you integrate 8x minus 1, you will have y equals. Add 1 to the power, so it'll become x squared over 2, which will just give you 4x squared. Integrate 1, you will have the minus 1x. And remember in the end, whenever you integrate, you will have plus c. That is us integrated, now look at the additional information. So we're told that x is 1 and y is 5. So when x is 1 and y is 5, so you can sub these values in here. It means then that the only unknown will be c. So we can work that out. So you would have 5 would equal 4 times 1 squared minus 1 plus c. We're just subbing that into the general solution. We're just subbing it in here. If you work that out, 5 would equal 3, add c, meaning then the value of c would just be 2. What you can then do is you can say that therefore your particular solution is going to be the exact same as the general solution. However, you know the value of c. So instead of writing plus c, you can write plus 2. And that is how you would solve that to get the particular solution. Example number 2. ds by dt equals 4t minus 3. Find an expression for s in terms of t, given that when t is 3, s is 20. So, once again, you want to get back to s. Find an expression for s. So to go back the way, you would have to then integrate. So s equals is going to be the integral of this 4t minus 3. And because it's going to be the t that we're adding 1 to the power of and so on, it would be with respect to t. So you put dt just on the end. If you integrate that, then you would say s equals. Integrating this, you would end up with t squared over 2. But you've also got the 4, so the 4 and the 2 would just make that 2t squared. You've got minus 3, which will then become a minus 3t. And Leah, what do you have in the end? Brilliant, plus C, you get it. That's your general solution. Again, look at the additional information. We're told that when T is three, S is 20. So you can take that information and you can replace S with 20 and you can replace T with three. So doing that, we will end up with 20 equals two times three squared minus three times three plus C. Work that out, 20 equals 18 minus nine plus C. Meaning then that 20 would equal 9 at C, and the value of C then would just be 11. This up here, woo, hello, is the general solution. If we want the particular solution, you just rewrite this, hello, and you replace C with 11. So that is what you'd have for your particular solution. 
Example three. This time, a curve y equals f of x is such that the derivative dy by dx equals 4x minus 6x squared. The curve passes through the point negative 1, 9. So express y in terms of x. How then would you get back to find y if you are given dy by dx? What would you do with that, Sandy? Perfect, you integrate, well done. So integrate that, so y would equal, it's going to be the integral of this right hand side here. It's the integral of the 4x minus 6x squared. Integrating that then, you would end up with y equals. Integrate the 4x would give you 2x squared. Integrate this, you add one to the power, divide by the new power, so you'd have minus 2x cubed. And what else do we need, Sandy? Plus C. Yes, we've got a plus C, brilliant. From there, again, you want to express y in terms of x. Well, we've done that, but we are given more information. We're told that it passes through the point negative 1, 9. These are your x and your y coordinates. So really, we know the value of x and y. So we can replace x and y with negative 1 and 9. So at negative 1, 9, x is obviously negative 1, y is 9. We can sub them into that equation. Therefore, you would say 9 would equal 2 times negative 1 squared, take away 2 times negative 1 cubed, plus c. Work that out, simplify it a wee bit, and you would end up with c equals 5. c is the only unknown there, so we can work it out. Again, you're wanting your particular solution. This is your general solution. All you want to do is you just want to rewrite that, but we're replacing c with 5. So you would say y would equal 2x squared minus 2 times x cubed plus 5. And that would be the equation. Let's try example 4. So with this one, if f dash x equals 1 minus 1 over the square root of x, and f of 4 equals 1, find f of x. So with this one, how on earth do you do this? Well, again, you're wanting to find f of x. We are given f dash x, so we want to go back the way. So we need to integrate f dash x. We need to integrate this. So if you integrate the 1 minus 1 over the square root of x, how would you go about doing that? Well, you know you cannot integrate when x is on the bottom of a fraction or when you have any root signs, the square root, cube root, and so on. So we need to, first of all, rewrite this. So don't just say, uh, don't just get rid of this integral sign because we're keeping that, we're not integrating yet. We are just rewriting it. So that is going to be equal to x, uh, the square root of x is obviously x to the power of a half move that up to the top line, and you'd have x to the power of negative a half. So keep 1 minus it as it is, and rewrite that. From there, well, x isn't on the bottom, we also don't have any roots, so now we can integrate that. So integrating 1, we just end up with x. Integrating x to the negative a half, add 1 to the power, so negative a half add 1 will give you positive a half, so it becomes x to the half. Divide by that new power, so we divide by the half, and then plus c. Just remember, when you are dividing by a half, if you were doing that way back in the olden days, you would turn the fraction on the right upside down and multiply. Dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by 2. So it would become x minus 2, and then x to the half here would just become root x. So it's x minus 2, root x plus c. So that is what you would have for your general solution. If you look at the addi additional information though, f of 4 equals 1. Well, what this means is that in f of x, we are subbing in 4 uh, in place of x. So really, 4 is going to be the value of x, because instead of f of x, we've got f of 4. So when x is 4, well, when you sub in that, when we replace x with 4, what we get out is 1. So f of x will be equal to 1. So from there, go back to this, we've got f of x equals, we've just got this bit down here with the plus c obviously, and we can replace f of x with 1, and we can replace x with 4. So we'd have 1 equals 4 minus 2 times the square root of 4 plus c. Work that out, so it's 4 minus 2 times 2, which obviously is 4, plus c. That would give us 1 equals 0 plus c, meaning then that c is 1. And again, if you want to find f of x, we have enough information to find a particular solution. So a particular solution, we just have 
f of x equals, and it's the exact same as this, but we now know the value of c. So it's going to be x minus 2 root x plus 1. And that is your particular solution. Ta-da! Example 5. So the gradient of the tangent to a curve at x, y, that point, is given by dy by dx equals 4x minus 4 over x squared. If the curve y equals f of x passes through the point 211, find its equation. So we're wanting to find the equation here. We want to find out the equation of the curve, and we know it's going to be y equals f of x. What we're given is dy by dx. So what we want to do once again, is integrate. So we have y equals, to get back to y, we'd have to integrate this right-hand side. We have to integrate the 4x minus 4 over x squared. Once again, to do that, you cannot have x in the bottom. You can't have any root signs, so just rewrite that. So 4x stays as it is, minus stays as it is, and then move the x squared to the top, so it become 4x to the negative 2. Just keep the integral sign, keep dx, because we're not integrating it yet. From there, we now can integrate it, though. So integrating that, 4x, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, would give us 2x squared, minus, add 1 to the power here, that would give us 4x to the power of negative 1, divide by the new power, so divide by the negative 1, and once again, you need your plus c. Simplify that slightly, and you would end up with 2x squared, the two negatives would make that positive, and that would become 4. And then the x to the negative 1, just move that back to the bottom line, right over the positive index. It'll make the next bit a lot easier. So that there will be our general solution. We are told, though, that the curve passes through the point 2, 11. So once again, just think, that's your x and your y coordinates. So it's the x and the y values. So at the point 2, 11, you know x is 2 and y is 11. So go back down to your general equation and replace x with 2 and y with 11. If you do that, you will end up with 11 equals 2 times 2 squared plus 4 over 2. Again, another reason for rewriting that with a positive index is if you subbed in 2 here, you'd have 4 times 2 to the power of negative 1. Whenever you work out the number to the power of a negative index, it's quite confusing, so it's far easier writing it with a positive index. Here, it would just become 4 over 2, which is nice and simple. Obviously, keep the plus C. From there, if you rewrite that, it would become 11 equals 10 plus C. Therefore, C is just going to be 1. We want to find the equation. This is the general solution. We have enough information to find C, so we can therefore say that y would equal uh, 2x squared plus 4 over x, and just replace C with 1, so it become plus 1. And that there would be your particular solution. Five examples there, any you're unsure of, just look back. But try these questions in the Heinemann book, page 182, exercise 9Q. See how you get on. Any problems, just ask me in class. Or send me an email, ask me on Teams, send a pigeon, do whatever you like. Good luck, have fun.